These are turbulent and for some in our community, frightening times. It seems as if so much of what we stand for as a public land grant university is under attack. And as a scientist and the university's president, I'm also deeply disturbed by the attacks on our community members and attacks on facts. It is during such challenging times that the University of Minnesota can and must shine. This is a moment of great uncertainty for many people in many ways. But I know of one indisputable certainty, and that is the deep and broad impact our university has on all 87 counties of our state and on just about every one of our more than 5 million citizens. A way to enhance that impact is to stay true to our core values and ensure our actions reflect them. And I know after six years on this job that we are not merely the University of Minnesota. This university is Minnesota. And right now, and it feels like more than ever, the state and its people have their eyes on us. That gaze results from all of the pressing issues that are upon us in them. And in many more ways than not, we can be proud of all we do and of what we stand for. We're proud of our affordable excellence and the way over the past five years, we've kept a lid on tuition and reduced debt for our Minnesota resident undergraduates. In the end, for most things and on most days, the state looks to us because simply put, the University of Minnesota is indispensable. We give this state a true sense of all the possibilities for it and its future. If our ability to conduct our research at this university is hindered by those with self-interest or political agendas, we must fight that. We are committed to academic freedom and to the facts. Our ethos is this. If our studies and research are legal and ethical, we will follow science and inquiry where it leads us. That's at our core. We cannot condone a chilling of conversation. I know that some people on our campuses are fearful of saying how they feel or think and fearful of being attacked for simply expressing themselves. And that includes our Republican and conservative colleagues, peers and students who I've been told sometimes feel afraid to speak their minds in our environment. And that's wrong. The recent poster of a swastika on campus calling for quote, global white supremacy was disgusting. The vandalism last fall of our Muslim Student Association board on the Washington Avenue Bridge was vicious. Other incidents of hate that have occurred are beyond disappointing. We need to promote a culture that honors free speech while discouraging hateful words. Earlier this week, I received recommendations from the group and I will immediately be asking the appropriate units to implement them. They include one, mandatory training for faculty and staff. Not everyone will like this, but the time has come. A resolution is moving through faculty governance supporting such training, and we will consult broadly in implementing this recommendation. Two, enhance training and additional education for students after their first year. Three, sustain public health and public awareness campaign. Four, creating a president's advisory committee on sexual assault that will regularly report to me. And five, developing metrics to evaluate and measure our sexual assault and misconduct prevention, education, advocacy, and awareness efforts on campus, including conducting a campus climate survey every three years. These core values can guide us in the days to come. These uncertain times demand it. Our extraordinarily, extraordinary faculty, staff, and students deserve it. And the continued greatness of the University of Minnesota depends on it. Thank you.